What's good YouTube? How are you? Did you enjoy that last video on one of the worst games ever made? If you haven't seen it, it's linked around quite a ride but it's time to wash that foul taste out of my mouth with another cheeky hidden gem from the ps1 era a game known by a few names and in a few different places i know it as exhumed because that's what it was called in europe but in america it was called power slave named after the iron maiden album of the same name apparently called that because the album had an egyptian themed cover but because iron maiden in the uk don't take no shit the name had to be changed wouldn't be the last time they'd do that now would it i I prefer the name Exhumed anyway, it makes the game sound slightly darker and I think the PAL artwork really helped with that. Although, the other artwork was made by the same person that made the Doom PSX version artwork which I fucking love so they're both very cool pictures. The game is a little bit more mysterious and unique than your average old school FPS however since this game has three different versions. The first version that was released was actually for the Sega Saturn of all consoles. Because the Saturn was notoriously awkward to develop games for, Lobotomy Software decided to get cracking with that one first since it would be the most difficult and with that they might be able to be other shooters to the market on the same console. After that, the game was released on the PS1, which had some updated gameplay in the forms of new areas and architectures, etc. The Saturn's technology was apparently so weird that they basically just redesigned massive chunks of the game while they were switching consoles because it was that much they had to change anyway. Alongside the architecture changes, the levels Amon Mines, Haket Marsh, Set Palace, Cavern of Peril, and Kilmart Colony are pretty much completely different levels in both versions. These two versions were made in the slave driver engine which actually features a true 3d world and pretty tight controls with the ability to look up and down and jump all over the place it really was quite impressive for a console shooter of the time and it wasn't just built off of a pre-existing engine however the third version of the game made for ms dos was made using a pre-existing engine that engine being the build engine so not only does that engine have the holy trinity it also has the weirdest version of this little bad boy the game is actually completely different on MS-DOS to the two console versions. So something in this game that is pretty unique is that the enemies drop two different kinds of orbs, either a red orb for health or a blue orb for ammo. And these orbs can give ammo to any weapon. Whichever one you have equipped, it will reload some of the ammo to that weapon. The weapons also don't have ammo counters, but instead this blue bar down here. It seems a little strange, but you do get used to that very quickly. Not in the DOS version, however. That game has a regular ammo counter, one for each weapon, alongside with a mana counter, which can be used for spells and the like, a lung capacity meter that's constantly on the hood, there's different weapon sprites, different enemies, and even the levels are completely different. I have this version, it was recently released on GOG, but I've only played the first level to get this footage, and I really do not like it. Like, look at this, I have honestly no idea where to go, and this is only the first level. Is it through this hedge? I don't know. Our good old friends over at Night Dive Studios grabbed the rights to this game all the way back in 2015, actually, and it wasn't until a few weeks ago that this tweet very excitedly appeared online. So it does seem that Night Dive are gonna be re-releasing this bad boy sometime soon. I just hope they do the console version over the DOS version, or maybe they'll do both, that'd be pretty cool. Now, usually I would do what I did with Alien Trilogy and play the game on the original hardware. I have the PlayStation version. I sadly don't have a Sega Saturn. The Patreon is linked in the description though if you wanted to help me get one. <laughs> but this game is substantially harder than Alien Trilogy, mostly because of the first person platforming over instant death pits. So I will actually be using Power Slave EX, which is made in the Kex engine by Kaiser. Same person that did Doom 64 EX and the Turok EX remakes. Very talented individual. So this is probably gonna be quite close to what we can expect from the release from Night Dive. There are some things that don't quite seem right in the EX version to be fair, mainly with damage and hitboxes. Somewhat a bit like the Lost Soul damage output in the Doom 64 EX re-release. These cat bitches absolutely pound the shit out of you if you get snagged on any sort of surface and get cornered with them. They also seem to hit you from quite far away as well but that is a little bit hard to tell just how much of that is the kex engine's fault since your hitbox in this game is redonkulous anyway this game also features some of the craziest secret collectibles i've ever seen the game has something called team dolls which are extremely well hidden and actually give you some game breaking abilities but don't you worry we'll get into that later in the video so Come with me and you'll see another awesome retro FPS game.
So, now we're introduced to the story of the game, and it has some pretty dark moments. During the time of the pharaohs, the city of Karnak was a shining example of civilization that all other nations could only hope to emulate. Today, Karnak lives on, surrounded by the spirits of the past. However, something has gone terribly wrong. Unknown forces have seized the city, and great turmoil is spreading into neighboring lands. World leaders from all parts of the globe have sent forces into the Karnak Valley, but none have returned. The great power of this new empire is quickly crushing the best forces the human world has to offer. The only known information about this crisis came from a Karnak villager found wandering through the desert miles from his home, dazed, dehydrated, and close to death. In his final moments among the living, the villager told horrifying stories of fierce alien creatures that invaded the city, devoured the women and children, and made slaves of the men. Many of the unfortunate victims were skinned alive or brutally dismembered. Others were subjected to unbearable tortures, injected with strange substances, and then mummified while still alive. According to the villager, even the mummified body of the great King Ramses was unearthed and taken away. You have been chosen from a group of the best operatives in the world to infiltrate Karnak and destroy the threatening forces. But as your helicopter nears the Karnak Valley, it is shot down. You barely escape with your life. With no possible contact to the outside world, you begin your adventure, ready to accomplish your mission, praying to return alive. And here we are on the world map. One thing that this game has going for it that really makes it quite a standout title, especially for the time, is that it is actually partially a Metroidvania styled game as well. That's right, you have power-ups throughout the game that you will need to obtain and use on earlier levels to progress, not just for secrets. Here you can see those orbs I was telling you about, the blue one gives you weapon power and the red one refills your health. The game does feature some very satisfying and damn dangerous explosions. Splash damage has a big range in this game. As you can see, this is completely different to what we saw in the first level of the DOS version. We pop in, kill some blue instead of red little enemies, and then we come down here and meet Ramses himself. Now Ramses can waffle along quite a lot, but he basically saves me six special items that will give us powers, and it will give us tips on where to find them. The level exits and entrances are camels by the way, so you can pop into levels and pop back out really easily just by turning around and leaving, and some levels have multiple camel exits. In the next level, Karnak, we are introduced to our second main enemy. This is the Anubis, pretty standard, shoots a blue fireball at you, which can sometimes be annoying to dodge in hallways because of how big your hitbox is, and it's basically this game's version of an imp. This level level is where we're first shown that this game has multiple paths and exits from certain levels that will lead you to different parts of the world map. The first time we visit here we can't make it up these big stairs so we have to turn back and blow open this wall, grab this key, blow open another wall, cross this bridge through the key door and make a break for it to our camel. The next level has these bird enemies that don't even get a folder PNG. They're really annoying to hit on console, but they're pretty trivial with real mouse aim actually. This game also doesn't have a shotgun by the way, you get an M60 machine gun. It does a fair amount of damage to lower tier enemies and fires in a free burst shot. I always thought this was a pretty dickish place to hide a key, but my god what I've learned about the places they hide other things. That green shit down there is a one hit kill if you touch it, at least for now. We'll be seeing more of that shit shortly. So at the top of this rather slow elevator are some birds that are about to get blown to smithereens and the first of our six special items in this game. The Sandals of Ikumtet. I think that's how you pronounce that. So what these bad boys do is massively increase your jump height. I also love the fact that this big muscular army man is now running around in a pair of flip flops. So with our new ability in tow, we hop up here and get taken back to our boy Ramses. Our man explains about the sandals giving us an increased jump height and how the next item we need is up towards the north. So now we head back to Carmack. I can now jump much higher so I can make it up these massive steps and take note of that body of water over there as we bounce our way through to another camel. This has now allowed us to access a new part of the map, and that beeping you hear, well that is one of the collectibles in this game that is required for the good ending. 
the transmitter, broken up into eight pieces and scattered throughout the levels in hidden, sneaky places. This level brings something to the table that makes the bile rise up in my throat. The omen wasp. These little fuckers are so annoying. They are so awkward to hit. They make annoying noises, can somehow block you in because of the size of both your hitbox and theirs. God, they just make everything worse. And in the EX version of this game, they spam their attacks so fast they're sometimes even more deadly and even more annoying. These are by far my most hated part of this game. They love to hide in pots too, so now you're never truly safe. So here's the first transmitter piece. And I actually did this completely wrong. You see, as you can tell by my sudden loss of health, full damage in this game is a bitch and I was supposed to jump to that platform first. Also, the switch I flicked first, I should have flicked second. I now can't flick it, so that means I can't turn off this fire trap anymore. Yeah, so there's no quick saves in this game, and there's also no quick saves in the EX version of this game either. I know that total accuracy is what we're going for here, but fuck me, throw me a bone. Right, let's do it correctly this time. I'm actually going to let the fireballs kill some of these enemies in this room too. Now I flick this switch, get in here nice and safely, and grab ourselves the first transmitter piece. Right, so we hop up here, grab the symbol of time, and you hear that door open. Other than being very satisfying, this room contains a full weapon power, which refills every ammo bar for all of your weapons. It's awesome, and there's also one for your health bars too. Yes, I said health bars. Right, so this is what I consider to be the first real level in the game. It's got lots of Anubis roaming around, it has multiple ways you need to go, and it can be a little bit puzzling and maze-like your first couple of times through it. Some of the level layouts in this game are done extremely well, and being able to play it with a keyboard and mouse really makes the movement shine. On the PS1, your character can be quite clunky, as you would imagine, but in this version, oh, it's nice. I'm very much looking forward to the Night Dive release. Fun fact, I've never made it through this without getting hit. Until today, baby. Okay, something you need to be prepared for in this game is first-person platforming. While far more forgivable with real mouse aim and strafing, still very annoying because all of the platforms in this game have a quirk. They're either moving or about to fall from under you or something stupid. Oh, God, I hate it. And here we have our second magical item, the Sobek Mask. This little bad boy basically lets you breathe underwater for more than five seconds without drowning and opens up another exit from Carmack. I cannot overstate how much better the swimming controls are in this version over the PS1 version there. Ramses will tell us to go to the south through the Nile River. We're gonna get ourselves a powerful new weapon and apparently we'll be winding up in a place where a horrible beast dwells. Bring it on then. While we're passing through Carmack for what could be the final time, what do you say we do some secret ranting? So, over here with my mega flip flop jump, I can't quite make this gap. But when you come back up from down here, this lift extends the platform for you, allowing you to make the jump. And even though these fucking annoying scorpions somehow block my path, we get the symbol of time. The time door is right next to us and has a few beasties inside. But once they're dispatched, we hop up here and grab this. Now we have two health bars. That's not all though. If we come over here and jump in this body of water I mentioned earlier and swim our way away through this long tunnel, thanks to the Sobek mask, we eventually get here and get another one. We've just tripled our health, by the way. On our way to get these health upgrades, we grab some more keys and that led us down here. So we hop in another long body of water and that leads us to another handy camel to get the fuck out of here. This level's music also really, really reminds me of the original Resident Evil for some reason. It's relaxing while oddly unsettling. Probably because this level is full of fucking wasps. Something that is so cool in this game is you need to keep your eyes open for things that you may need to come back to later in the game for a secret or another exit. Like this hole in the ground here. You have to jump over it to grab this time key. But it's not the last time you'll need to come here. And the game never outright tells you this is where you need to come. It just hints towards the south of the map. It's very well done and quite a unique thing in the world of retro shooters to be fair. Right. Here's some platforming over one hit death pits. Just gotta hop over here and clear all these out. Right, good. Now hop over here for the key. Now just a simple case of jumping back. Finally back across the death pits we get our next weapon. The Ammon Bomb. They're basically grenades with a fucking massive splash damage radius and now allow us to blow up lots of walls. Just as a footnote, these are literally just normal grenades in the DOS version. This is where the transmitter piece is, by the way. Not exactly shocking news since you can see it flashing through the walls. 
This is a bit more awkward to do in the PS1 version, but this is by far the best way to deal with piranhas. So eventually we wind up on top of the level where those death pits were earlier. It has one of the most evil monster closets I could ever imagine. What? Then pits you against a tiny ledge with firebombs. Then an Anubis, all while you have to blast your way through walls to continue. And now we have to preemptively blow up far away walls before we try and jump these gaps. I did push jump. Great. I'll just do all 10 minutes of that level over again, shall I? What makes that even worse is I died right at the end of the level. God, I hate these jumps. Let's go, Sir Camelot. Barely any time into the next level and we're faced with the new enemy, the mummy. They're not too difficult to take down. They're kind of like this game's version of a revenant. They fire these red homing spirits at you and I swear they're much harder to avoid in the EX version too. Like these red things really track you around some corners. Here's a fine example of how big your hitbox actually is. Ridiculous. Fuck these wasps. I'm trying to open a door, you little buzzy bitch. Ah, yes, check this out. I love doing this. Also, this is where the transmitter piece is in this level. You jump onto this platform, blow this wall up, but careful not to blow yourself up, jump on through, and there you go. You have no idea how happy that made me. Okay, now here is the first real shitty thing that this game is going to throw at you. Much easier in this version, mind you, but still a bit of a ball ache. Not only are the platforms dropping when you land on them, giving you very little time to hit the switch and then jump back off again. But because they're moving up and down, if you jump from one to another from too much of a height, the fall damage can actually kill you. Then it's back to the beginning. They also throw fire bombs at you and fucking wasps. And to top it all off, you're also doing this over lava, which if you accidentally fall into is a one hit kill. Let's just get the fuck out of here. Okay, so set arena. You might be able to tell by the name and by the music that this is the level that houses our first boss fight. But that is not all it houses, my friends. No, no, no. This level is the one level in the game where I know the location of one of the team dolls. Now, we're going to be getting all of the team dolls at the end of the video, but here we go. This is the only one that I already know how to do, so we'll just do it. And there it is. These things are so amazingly well hidden and collecting them all actually makes a huge difference to the gameplay of the game, unlocking you extra special abilities. Imagine that. So set is a little annoying on the PS1 because circle strafing isn't as easy. But on this version, let's wipe the floor with this fucking pussy. Now we get the shawl of Isis. What this little fellow allows you to do is if you push the jump button again while you're already in the air and hold it down, you can glide. So now you're basically flying. This game has already completely changed the way the player moves and controls since the start of the game. And this is only half of the magical items. Back with big boy Ramses, he showers me with compliments and tells me about a deep cavity in the south. <clears throat> Back in these fucking wasp filled mines again. I'm surprised they're not down here waiting for me. But now that we can float, we just float our way down to the bottom of this hole and find a lovely Sir Camelot waiting to take us to the new way. The Cavern of Peril. Oh my, how aptly named. This place is filled with wasps and mummies, but on top of that, it has one of the most awkward jumps in the entire game. And if you fuck it up, you die. 
Lovely. This level does feature the new weapon, however. The flamethrower is behind this wall, but I was out of ammo for every weapon here, and I need to blow up these pots. The weapon is pretty useful against mummies and wasps, but it doesn't make them any less annoying. So this level requires you to head down some rather treacherous paths to throw two switches to allow you to get a key to continue. One of these paths isn't too bad because you're climbing up a small waterfall. If you miss a jump, Whatever, no big deal, you just try again. Eventually making your way underneath the waterfall to throw the switch and then do it all in reverse. The other direction, however, has what I consider to be one of the hardest jumps in the game. You have to jump and slightly float down this pit being careful not to die from the fall damage, then glide your way over to this platform. Once you're there, you have to jump high enough to glide your way through this low hanging tunnel and time it so that you land on this rising and lowering platform on the other side. You miss this jump, you die, you do the level again. I made it look easier because I'm a godlike gamer, but you go up that lift and throw another switch. Now, you have to do the jump back over firebombs. Let's see how that goes. Fucking wonderful. I also have no ammo here and this happens. Right, let's try this again. Now that I've made it over that, it's still not over. Thank fuck for that. This level has a crafty transmitter piece hidden away in it. I tried to blow open the wall and kill the fish, but no such luck. Also, wasps can't fucking swim. Oh, and by the way, pots can now contain explosive spirits, so that's always a nice surprise. Seems to me like half the fucking pots in this level either contain a wasp or some spirit explosives. This level has our next magical item in it, and it also introduces us to the Bastet. Now, these sisters will scratch the shit out of you, and they can teleport around appearing behind you. They're dangerous, and I have a feeling they're even more dangerous in the Kex engine for some reason. I usually go with the flamethrower, or my new favorite weapon, the Anon Bomb. This level is pretty straightforward, plenty of scorpions and getting you really familiar with the Bastet because there will be plenty more. The ending of this level really annoys me because I remember getting stuck and confused here. As you can see, my bomb blew open a hole in the floor, but I didn't hit that floor the first time I played this level. And I tried to jump over this lava, which I couldn't do, and it instantly killed me. But what you're supposed to do is you drop down this hole and grab a key, and that gives you access to the protective anklets. An extremely important item because these fucking stupid floors will no longer kill you in one hit. Literally a game changer. Off to Ramses. He tells us we now need to use these anklets to get to a place that has been swallowed by the sea. Interesting. Back in old Karnak Sanctuary, we head over to the green slime pit we saw earlier and hop our way down here. Where good old Camelot is waiting for us. This is another level with a new weapon and slime and bastets all over the bloody place. This level can be a bit of a pain in the ass because it's set across like multiple floors and the key doors can be a bit awkward to find. While we're on the topic, I'll just say this now, that I really struggle with the difference between the war earth and power symbols. You see the images of these keys on these low res doors and you don't really know what you're looking at. The only one I can identify immediately is the symbol of time but here we have the cobra staff now this little fella shoots out those green things that were hiding in the pots everywhere they hone in on enemies but to be honest i don't use it very much i find it much faster to just shoot something or blow it up with an atom bomb the auto targeting is also not without its issues the transmitter piece is behind this force field we can't get through these yet but our day will come look at these bitches So, pretty much right at the end of a level, and you have to do this jump. I really hope the Night Dive version of this game has fucking quick saves. I have no idea how to pronounce the name of this level. I'll just call it Cumin, shall I? So the Sunken Palace of Cumin is an underwater maze, and it's a pain in the fucking ass on the PS1, because the in-water controls leave a little bit to be desired. Along with piranhas, there's also proximity mines in the water too that have a fucking ridiculous splash damage range. I've got to say though, going up to a room and chucking in a bomb to blow up all the mines is a very satisfying experience. Once you get the final key, you have to swim out of this room before it locks you in and kills you. And on the way out, this health room is now open. There's something a little suspicious about it, I've always thought. And this wall here. Very strange. In this level, I decided to just start maining anim bombs. And to be honest with you, it works really, really well. Bit of splash damage here and there, but when you're blowing the fuck out of everything, you barely notice. The pots on this level are drunk people as well. You you're right, mate. Adam bombs away. 
Beautiful. This level has a time door part, and it is damn hard on the original hardware because of how much slower the turning speed is. Luckily, when you've got a mouse in your hands, it goes much smoother. Oh, look, more bastets. This level is fucking riddled with them. Now, I remember there being a shit secret over here, and the reason it's shit, this. Oh, and once you miraculously get down, this is waiting for you. Remember what I said about these bitches and your hitbox in this game? Yeah. It was at this moment I figured that this secret can go hop on a pineapple in the nude, and I'll sort it out later. Fuck these hitboxes. So, secret time. I've never actually made it this far in the game before. That's right. I never owned this game when I was younger. I just had this lovely little demo disc over here and I bought the game as an adult off eBay. So it's one of those lovely classic games that I absolutely love, but I've never actually seen it all the way through. Well, today's the day, champs. This is one of the first levels that we've got going on here that takes place surrounded completely by lava. It is actually a really cool aesthetic. There's also this absolutely delightful bubbling sound and like the scraping of like clanky pots that can be heard when I'm not blowing everything to kingdom fuck. Now this level is pretty straightforward up until this point when you get the earth key and then your boy got lost for about five minutes straight until I eventually remembered where the earth door was. Now we get to have this nice little float down these lava flumes. Like I've never played a retro shooter that has this kind of control scheme. Like it's so satisfying to just float your way around and not die. Oh, it's, it's hard to explain, but it feels so good to do. At the bottom of these flumes, you've got these two little clowns that want a staff off and you can ask any of my exes, I can barely operate a staff. So as was previously mentioned, I've never seen any of this before. So I was exploring this massive empty level and Oh my! So this is Selkis, which makes the level name make sense, and this is the second boss of the game, so it's not hard, you just need to shoot it in the flute until it dies. And that looks a little something like this. Yes, I nearly ran out of ammo and had to kill it with the fucking pistol. Oh, and when the bastard dies, the level gets flooded with a shit ton of scorpions. But we do get our next super item though, the Killmart Scepter, which lets us go through these stupid force fields. At last, back over with Gordon Ramsay's, he tells us we need to climb to the highest peak of the valley to find our sixth and final special item. First things first, I'm going to retrack down every force field I've ever seen and see what's going on on the other side, like a real metroidvania. First port of call is the Hackett Marsh, which has a lovely little transmitter piece hidden away. So I think we only have three of them left now. Back in level two, we hop through here and get ourselves another lovely extra health bar. Very handy considering where we're going shortly. And over in the party central Sobek Mountain Shrine, I'm literally only using Anim Bombs at this point and I'm having a great time doing so and it turns out this is the direction we need to go. So this level, Magma Fields, we get this awesome new weapon, the Ring of Ra. It also has the fucking cheek to throw this at you. These little shits are by far the hardest enemy in the game and I absolutely hate them. They can push your shit in at the drop of a hat. So if you see them, my advice is to just leg it for now. The level has these pretty cool lava tunnels that require you to play a little balancing act with your shawl. You don't want to drop too low or you might not make it all the way down and eventually you get this hypnotizing tunnel that I love and it leads to this fucking death trap. Right, this time through I found this very essential transmitter piece down this fuck nut alley here. Ah, oh, come on man. It was at this point I found that me senselessly throwing anim bombs at the first magma mantis tried to figure out how many it takes to kill it, opened this little passage here. And it seems I need more anim bombs to get through, which I don't have. Fucking great. Try again then, shall we?
Oh hey, you see that over there? A fucking team doll. The second one I've ever found. How delightful. And it gives us an exit that avoids that room of doom. What a top result. So this level really seems to like forcing you to face off against these absolute shit dicks. But I still haven't figured out how much ammunition is required to kill these clowns. So we'll just avoid them again for now. Yep, we'll just ignore that one too. So, you know I've been avoiding all these fuckers. Well, this room isn't the easiest to do that in. Right oh, here we go, the Horus Feather. This game changing son of a bitch makes it so that when you hold the jump button, you float. That's right, we can basically fucking fly now. Oh, Ramses is very pleased that we have all the magical items that are required to get where we need to be. It mentions something about us needing to be properly armed to fight some bitch, but as per, I completely ignore his advice. Before we crack on any further, we've got a score to settle with this fucking room of shit. Much easier when you can literally fly. Right, just one more to get then. Now, I don't know if you remember about 17 days ago when I was mentioning falling into this lava pit and dying. Well, now we can cross it with no problems at all. We blow a hole in this wall and get the fuck out of here. Welcome to the Canyon of Chaos. This level is basically like a maze, but we're flying around the place instead of being on foot. You can only fly as high as the peak of your jump. So what you need to do is try and find routes to nice higher places and then jump from them to get as high as possible to continue on. It's a bit of a pain in the ass, and I'm probably not going to show you much of it at all. However, there is a transmitter piece in here somewhere, and also a new weapon. I do not manage to find that new weapon until I'd already finished the game, proving it to be unnecessary, but Christ, it is a good weapon. Okay, so here we have the final transmitter piece in the noisiest trap to ever existed. I've probably turned it down for you, but trust me, it's fucking deafening. Also, if you touch those blue balls, you die instantly, just like anyone who ever goes near blue balls. <laughs> As you can see, he managed to get his pawn loaded up and then he blue balled to death. One quirk of this version of the game that I haven't pointed out yet is when you exit the pause menu, you face a completely different direction to what you were originally facing. I'm guessing it's kind of like it spins you north. It's extremely disorientating and nearly kills me here again. After I finally managed to grab the final transmitter piece, which gets you the true ending by the way, the game leads me to a dead end with a sealed door. The only way to open it, kill this shitty magma mantis. Let's go. After about 20 minutes of flying around this hellhole of a maze, the game throws this at me. As you can see, I'm still maining Anum Bombs because they're the best weapon in the game in my opinion. So I'm just going to blow some more things to Kingdom Come and get the fuck out of here. Right. I absolutely hate this level. It is the level in the game that has these little alien fellas in that I forgot to make an image of, but basically they just shoot you with a blaster and they're all over the fucking place. Also, the level starts with this nasty little trap that if you step on this big ass plate here, it turns on these blasters on the wall that shoot one hit bullets and it can't be stopped once it's turned on, basically soft locking you at the start of the level. On top of that, we have to blow our way through some underwater sections that lead to this small area filled with monster closets. And I was mainly atom bombs so much that I ran out when I really needed to blow up a wall and soft lock myself again and had to drown myself to start over. There's also this annoying ass section that has more noise than a canned Glastonbury that has you mucking about with more one hit blue balls. And when you don't know where you're going, this level can be a tad confusing, being yet another fucking maze. And then I'm rewarded with this.
Oh, and the level also ends with this room that is not only full of alien boys, but also full of blue ball wall guns, and it fucking sucks. This level took me about 45 minutes, and you can thank me later for saving you the time. This is a really big old empty level, and it's actually technically the last level in the game. When you reach this final room, you have to step on these things and give up all of your special items that you've gotten so used to using. Oh, and while I was searching for secrets, I got myself stuck up here. So the crafty game forces you to give up all six of these items to continue, and once you hop into this teleporter, you might be able to tell what time it is. Right so, so here we have Kilmart Khan. He's the fucking boss of the game. He has four forms, actually, past me, and one of them is super, super annoying. So as you may remember, I missed a weapon on the level a short while ago. So this means that I now struggle a little bit when nearly running out of ammo. Now the first form is easy, you just beat the shit out of it. The second form is quite annoying as well, because it basically goes into hyperspeed and keeps trying to ram into you to do melee damage. While it's doing this as well, it can be quite difficult to actually aim for the fucking thing. The good old Ring of Ra helped me with that one. Then the swine starts shitting out eggs with teeth that chase you around, but one bonus to this is that when they die, they do drop the much needed weapon power to refill at least some of your ammo. In its final form, it becomes this fucking snake thing. You have to shoot it until each little bald section of it explodes. Trouble is, the hitbox can be a little bit tricky to hit, and there's no way to restore weapon power from this point forward. As you can see, this one took me fucking ages, and you can fall off of this arena, which I never did surprisingly, but I decided to do this instead. Right, I had bombs this time, so finally, this fucking annoying caterpillar is dead. We continue on, and here's the gorgeous boy Ramses. Let's take him home and see what happens. Listen to me now, and I will give you my kingdom on Earth. You shall stand at the head of the living, and wear the sacred crown of power and supremacy. You will rule everything on which the eye of the sun shines. The praise of all nations will be laid at your feet, and you will live forever, because I have given you the gift of immortality. Leave this tomb now, as I see it forever, and follow the path back to your people. May the gods shine on you, and give you peace for all eternity. All right, so now the whole place is coming down around us. On top of that, the fucking walls are exploding. This didn't cause any troubles at all. Eventually, we find our way to our escape chopper and get the fuck out of here. Because of your heroic efforts, the Valley of Karnak is no longer in danger. At last, the people of Egypt can begin rebuilding the new kingdom. The world rejoices, and a huge ceremony is held in your honor. A renewed sense of peace and happiness is adopted by everyone on Earth. Several centuries later, your immortal power is proven superior to all other living creatures, and you become king of the world. So, apparently we become the king of the world? What a win. But that's not all, folks. Right, so this game has something like 24 collectible dolls or some shit, and they have pretty crazy effects on how the player controls once you collect a certain amount. And these effects are actually required to collect all of the dolls. There's one on each level at least, and they are more well hidden than KFC's original recipe. I obviously had to use a guide for this because they're fucking mad hidden, but come and take a look and I'll fly through these as fast as I can. Right, at the end of this level, you have to throw an atom bomb behind the camel, hop over, and grab our third doll. Not too complicated so far. You may recall I said this room had always seemed a little suspicious to me, and that's because... And then right at the end, this suspicious wall has opened up, and wouldn't you know it, doll number four. Right, at the start of this one, we need to blow open this wall to find nada. Then at the end of the booby trap room, we collect this key and blow open this wall, and then the wall behind it, then go through this force field, and then throw this switch, and that will open a secret wall that was in the secret wall all the way back at the start. And there's doll number five, a rather simple one, thankfully. Once you reach this point, launch a bomb over that wall, and you get yourself doll number six. Thankfully, this one isn't beyond or inside the room of doom. You just have to launch a bomb at this lava wall here and grab number seven. 
So, the weapon I missed, not very hidden at all, it's called the Sacred Manacle and it's like this game's BFG. The longer you hold the fire button, the bigger the blast and it hones in on enemies, very nice. But to the doll, you have to blast a hole through the roof here, climb our way up here and now we have some more fun with some blue balls. Now this is not as hard when you're rocking a keyboard and mouse, but I imagine with a PS1 or a Sega Saturn controller this would have been a fucking nightmare. Anyway, eventually, all the way down here, we make our merry way to doll number 8. This one. I have no idea how anyone was supposed to find this, but you bring back all six of your items, but then we recollect the sandals, mask, anklets, and the shawl, then head back for the level a little bit, and this fucking wall is open for no reason, and we have a little obstacle course that is made up of force field floors. It's not too hard, but just who the hell would think to come back and check this with four out of the six items? Anyway, doll number nine. There's also a doll right at the end of the fucking game, but you need to have full ammo on the atom bombs to get it. I have no bombs, so that means I have to beat the boss again, not using a single fucking bomb. Then make our way all the way to the end of the level, and then blow your way through this wall. Then continue blowing your way through 20 more walls, which is exactly how many bombs you can carry at full ammo, by the way, and that will eventually lead us to this beauty. Doll number 10, Piss Take. You will no doubt have noticed that this has made the image of a dolphin appear in the corner of a screen. Getting 10 of the dolls has awarded us with the dolphin power, which means we can now swim much faster, hold our breath underwater longer, and jump super high when leaving water, which also makes a delightful dolphin sound. Back in Ramses' tomb, the first time through, we blow open this wall, which leads to a metric fuck ton of scorpions, and also this little section of water over here. We have to swim down here, aim up at this fucking thing, chuck a bum up there, then we dive out, and looky looky. Doll number 11. Forgivably simple, we have to blow our way through this wall under this bridge, bomb the fuck out of everyone inside, jump through this hole, I'm not sure if it was there or I made, flick the switch, dolphin jump your way to doll number 12. The most annoying thing like this one, like quite a few of these, is it's right at the end of the fucking level. But you blow open this wall, swim down this tunnel, do a dolphin hop out, and grab doll number 13. Time for my least favourite level in the game, and get into the part that I needed to get to took me a fucking lifetime. But eventually you get to this point in the level, and blow open this wall, then you hop into the water and make your way through this lovely little obstacle course, where you have to dolphin jump out, hover over the gap while avoiding the fireballs, and then get to the end where you land on this switch, which opens the wall and gets us doll number 14. That fucking magic has awarded us with the eagle power. We can now fucking fly. Mashing the jump button lets us fly. Game fucking broken. So now we can fly, these are all pretty easy. Blow up this wall above the waterfall, then fly up there, blow open this wall, drop down into the water, and there's doll 15. Back in the room that gave me my favorite weapon. What else would you do but blow a hole in the ceiling? Fly up there and find doll number 16. It's really weird how many of these dolls I just waltzed past because I wasn't expecting to be hidden in every wall like a serial killer's house. While this level has scarred me deeply, being able to fly really makes this level less terrifying. I also had always wondered how you get up onto these ledges before I knew this game was hiding a fucking flight power and you can see there's a suspicious wall over here to open the fucker we also obviously have to get to the end of the level turn at the camel blow open this fucking wall and throw the switch and then this wall down here is open for us allowing us to grab doll number 17 back here again once we get to the end of the level we have to blow open the floor where the anklets were and bosh doll number 18 a semi straightforward one you come down here pop under this bridge and fly in and blow open this wall Thank God. Doll number 19. We're getting there. This one is a bit of a maze to get to, but once you find this room again, blow a hole in the roof as per usual by now. Fly your way up here and grab doll number 20. So, I had to find the last room in this level again, and yes, it took me about 30 fucking minutes because for some reason I still have no idea how to navigate this level. Anyway, once you're here and these annoying mummies are out of the way, we fly our way up here, try not to get shot to shit on our way in or out of this tunnel of death, and grab doll number 21. Back in the second boss level, thankfully we don't have to cross paths with them this time. Just blow open this wall, throw this switch, blow open this wall, throw this switch, blow open this wall down here, and because that's too simple, fly up here and grab doll number 22. Right, so we have to beat the bollocks off the boss yet again. Then, at our boy Ramses, you fly down here, and here it is. The final doll. Get your stinking paws off me, you, you damn dirty ass. Fucking 
awesome. Right, I probably made that look quite simple and quite fast, but it's just insane how many well hidden collectibles there are in this game. How anyone was supposed to find all of them, God only knows. But the fact that if you can find them, you get two amazing power ups that make the player control completely differently underwater and even fly, that is how you do collectibles. God, Lobotomy seemed like an awesome company, and it is a crime that this is the only game they ever made, along with two ports to the Sega Saturn that was Duke Nukem and Quake. They were around for just five years and made one of the best and most interesting FPS games I've honestly ever played. Do yourself a solid, and when Night Dive releases this, get it for yourself. Okay, there we go. Exhumed or Power Slave, whatever you want to call it. This one was a lot of fun. I've wanted to make a video on this game for ages and I'm really glad I finally sat down and got it to work. Uh, in this video, I used Power Slave EX, which I can't even remember where I found it. It was on GitHub somewhere, but I think the creator has taken their link down. So I'm not sure if they want people to use it. I think it's because Night Dive is releasing the game pretty soon, I think. So I actually can't let you know where I got it from because I genuinely don't remember. But as I said, Night Dive bringing it out soon so just a little bit of patience and you should be able to get your hands on this beautiful game it's a fantastic game it really 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 is i obviously cut quite a lot out because it's a pretty lengthy game as well the levels are quite challenging quite uh, lengthy in parts and yeah it's just a all-around crack in time and i love it the next video we have lined up will be something a little bit more odd shall we say um it's a game that was torture to play uh, but it should be very entertaining it's fucking terrible <laughs> so hopefully it should be entertaining at the very least if you made it to this point in the video what should we say leave in your comment hashtag exhumed or hashtag power slave up to you we'll see which name wins but i'll also be able to tell who made it to the end of the video as well as per usual zooming across the bottom of the screen are the members of my patreon they're absolute legends and they're very generous people and for their generosity they got this video earlier than youtube if you feel like joining that crew of little legends and getting videos a bit earlier the link to that will be in the description check it out if you fancy but yeah that was a lot of fun hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one